The outcome of the Greek election, added to the result in France, means the cat is now very much back among the Eurozone pigeons. Robert Short reports. Nobody likes austerity. Everybody likes growth. This weekend's elections in France and Greece have delivered this message, but electorates across Europe have delivered the same message before. So, will anything change this time? Outgoing French President Nicolas Sarkozy performed one of his final duties today, laying a wreath as part of victory in Europe Day. His successor, socialist Francois Hollande, stood alongside. Tomorrow will mark the 62nd anniversary of the Schuman Declaration, which led to the formation of the European Union and overcame centuries of hostility between France and Germany. This political dynamic, underpinning the European project, now faces a test over policies to deal with the fiscal crisis. The fear in Germany is that Hollande will try to play to, to his domestic gallery by essentially blaming Germans for not being able to do what he promised to do during the electoral campaign, essentially abolishing austerity. Countries are closely aligned because their interests are broadly the same. And France and Germany's interests are the same, to have a strong and healthy Eurozone and to have decent growth in Europe. So I'm not particularly worried that you'll see a fundamental breakdown of the relationship between these two countries at the heart of Europe. The growth sought by France's new president may deliver something to soothe his domestic political demands, but it may be a long way off the salvation sought by the people of Greece. Basically, it's all haggling. I think. If we haggle for a better deal, we are likely to get a better deal. The problem is that Greece has, regardless of who will be in power, Greece has simply no leeway. If it defaults, or, or if it reneges on its commitments, it will simply default. If it defaults, it has no access to private capital markets. If there's no money from the EU and the IMF, the government will go bust. A government going bust entails incredibly brutal austerity measures, much harsher than anything Greece has at the moment. A potent test of the European project is once more coming from Greece. An inconclusive result in this weekend's elections has seen a so far unsuccessful scramble to forge a coalition. The established parties of the left and right both lost seats. I think the message of uh, Sunday's election is punishment above anything else. So the people in Greece punished the two political parties that have been governing Greece for the past 40 years. If a government can't be formed, another election may be held in June. If that yields another inconclusive result, or if an elected government rejects the demands in the EU IMF bailout, then Greece's potential exit from the euro will come a step closer. If the two sides simply cannot agree, then the EU and the IMF will stop funding the Greek government. If they stop giving the Greek government, then within the next couple of months, Greece will simply run out of money to pay its, its pensions, to pay its salaries, to pay all the things that a government pays for on a day-to-day -day basis. And the likelihood then is that, though not the absolute certainty, but the strong likelihood at that stage is it would simply have to exit the euro. It can't pay its bills and it will have to print its own money to do so. And there's trouble brewing on the other side of the Mediterranean too. Today, the Spanish government announced a bailout of Bankia, the third biggest banking group in the country. And there are fears that Spain's banking problems are far from over. The real focus now is definitely on Spain. And it's a very similar situation to Ireland, indeed. We've had a property and construction boom that has collapsed, um, very obviously. And now the financial analysts, the government, the bank shareholders, the managers and everybody else are trying to figure out the likely scale of losses in, in Spain on those loans to the construction sector. And although the government, a bit like Ireland a couple of years ago, says that they're well enough provisioned and they have enough capital, very few people really believe that. They'll celebrate Europe Day tomorrow in Brussels. In the rest of Europe, voters are arguably only realising now what that really means.